welcome you to America's Game of the Week here in Seattle. And this matchup between the New York Giants and the Seattle Seahawks. Giants at three and five. Flip it for Seattle as they raise the 12th man flag. And the Giants won the toss they received. That's Captain Scott Smiley who raised the flag here today. Michael Cox waiting for the kick. And off we go in week 10. Right here with us. Giants will start at the 20. Well, what do you think there, Dr. Aikman, about the offense of the Giants and the changeover and what New York is asking with Ben McAdoo at offensive coordinator Eli to do within this system. Well it's been a different look offensively as we know throughout this season. They had always been based on getting the ball down the field with Kevin Gilbride as their offensive coordinator. As Giant fans know that has not been the case with this offense that Eli is now running. They start with play action, Manning out to his right, he's got his tight end, and that's Fells. And Daniel Fells across the 30, a 12-yard catch and run, and a first down on the first play from scrimmage for the Giants, and we look at the rookie, Andre Williams, fourth straight inactive game for Rashad Jennings, their top back. Odell Beckham Jr. is emerging as a big play threat for Eli Manning. Handoff is to the rookie, and Andre Williams is going to plow ahead for four. And now defensively, Troy, and you can take it away as we look at this group for Seattle. Some seldom seen names that are back there for a defense that just was dominant last year. They've had a number of injuries. A number of those guys did not play last week in that win against Oakland. Pete Carroll talks about how they're beginning to finally get healthy, but some key players out once again this afternoon including Cam Chancellor the great strong safety and now with the throw getting away it's incomplete to bring up third down Andre Williams the intended target Bennett and McDaniel will there for Seattle third and six coming up they see Richard Sherman and Odell Beckham we'll see whether or not Richard Sherman goes with Beckham in this ball game tip typically Sherman will play his left corner position where he is now and not follow the team's best receiver. Third down and six. Manning escapes trouble for the moment. And cannot, evidently did get rid of it. Incomplete, it's fourth down as Manning with that underhand toss just got it out of his hand before he stepped out of bounds. It's fourth down. Well, you're going to see Michael Bennett. He comes inside. And he gets great pressure then on Eli Manning. Peyton Hillis does an excellent job of picking up the blitz. But Michael Bennett is a matchup problem inside. And he gets the pressure. And then Richard Sherman blanketing Odell Beckham. Yeah, Odell Beckham Jr. has got his work cut out for him today. He hasn't seen many playing in his fifth game, the likes of Richard Sherman. Waiting for it is Walters. Walters is able to make the catch, drag down at the 20. And for what's going on on the sideline and the mood of the New York Giants here in Week 10, here's Aaron Andrews. Well, not only did New York have to deal with a three-game losing streak, but Antro Roll came out publicly this week and said during that loss on Monday night, he didn't think there was a pulse on the sideline. Very dead sideline, no heart. I talked to Eli Manning before the game, and he said, when you're losing and you're this frustrated, guys start looking for excuses. He believes everybody's still competing, but he says, right now, we just need to go out there and win. That's the only way to solve this. Well, we'll see how they get along here today in a tough environment as Russell Wilson starts at the 20 with a completion of Lynch. Out on the edge, Marshawn Lynch. Big start for number 24. He had maybe his best game of the year last week against Oakland, and here a catch and run of 23. Yeah, he led the team in receiving last week against Oakland. They split him out wide. They run the quick screen to him. They will do that at times. He doesn't have a lot of routes that he's going to run when they go to the empty backfield set, but they get him the ball on first down and pick up a nice game. Seven, a triple. Shot. 
Russell Wilson. The play action, get Russell Wilson out on the edge. They got Helfit, who's running a corner route, and nobody's in coverage. They overplay the run in pursuit. It's an outstanding job of setting it up with Marshawn Lynch in the backfield. Russell Wilson, who struggled in last week's win. Darrell Bevel calls the, the boot, gets him out for an easy completion. Here's Lynch left side, cuts up field. Inside the 20. And three big plays to start the day for this Seattle offense. 14 yards brought down by Jameel McClain. Uh, visiting with Pete Carroll, he feels that Marshawn Lynch is running the ball as well as he ever has since Pete Carroll became the head coach here in Seattle. And you watch that run. That's those were some tough yards that he earned last week, and he has another great run on that carry. Now some confusion defensively with the lineup for the Giants. Here's play number four, and it's Lynch. And for the first time, the Giants defensively step up a gain of just two. Hankins on the stop for the Giants with Jason Pierre-Paul. We look at the offensive line, they're getting healthier, but they don't have James Carpenter at left guard. It's Alvin Bailey getting that start. He was out at left tackle last week for Okun. Second and eight. Rain starts to fall. Michael takes it right side. Cuts up field and lunging. They're going to mark him inside the one. And it should be a first down as Kristen Michael, at least with the initial marking of the ball, is inside the one. It's first and goal. Now Kristen Michael, he's getting a few more opportunities. He had a pretty good preseason, but had a couple fumbles and a hamstring issue and all the carries that he's had this year have come in the last now four games. So he's getting his number called a little more than what he did early in the year. This will be an 80-yard drive to start the day for Seattle. It's Lynch, touchdown! they do and pretty easy for Marshawn Lynch to get in the end zone Luke Wilson not known for his blocking but does a great job on Matthias Kiwanuka that's a great drive by Seattle to open up this game mixing up the run in the pass six plays five first downs and a seven to nothing lead John Lynch had started with that completion. We welcome you inside our broadcast booth. I'm Joe Buck. That's Troy Aikman. You heard from Aaron Andrews. That's our group here in Seattle. And we were going to talk about the Seahawks finally looking for the complete game. We're so used to them dominating, especially here at home, off to a good start. Yeah, no question. Defense comes out, makes a stop on New York. They're on the opening possession. And what a drive right there by this offense. Mixing up the run in the pass, going down the field, and then handing it off to Marshawn Lynch. It's a great start for a team that Pete Carroll really believes is starting to hit their stride even without some key players in the lineup. And you look at the Giants. It started out 0-2. Then they went on the 3-0 run. Now they've lost three in a row. They're banged up in the secondary because of injury. They've lost Victor Cruz. They don't have Rashad Jennings. There's a lot on Eli Manning, number 10. And you see what the Giants have done. They've just struggled, period, in the first quarter all year. Well, this there's, team, there's a lot on him to carry this game. Well, there is. And, and this is not a Giants team that's built to come from behind. They just do not have enough playmakers, especially at the wide receiver position. So they've got to rely on the defense. But that was a good start for this Seattle team. Yeah, statistically, this defense for the Giants, it's been ugly. And another drive will start at the 20. 
Here are some of the injuries, the season enders for the Giants. Walter Thurman, a former Seahawk, went out early with a torn pec. Victor Cruz in a game at Philadelphia ripped up his knee. Tremaine McBride out with a bad thumb. And then after last week, the guy who was playing the best, Prince Amukamara, is out for the rest of the year. And there's the entire list. Jennings not out for the year. They hope to get him back next week. Until then, it's Andre Williams and Peyton Hillis, and this ball just floats. And somehow it's caught by Reuben Randall. That ball was just up in the air for grabs, and Randall comes down with it. Yeah, you called it. It hung up in the air. Contact could have been pass interference. Reuben Randall, the guy who last week was targeted 11 times. And just came down with four receptions. They've got to get more consistency out of him. It looked like the heel was out of bounds. And with that, we'll have a challenge from Pete Carroll. But I'm with you. I mean, if you don't get the catch in bounds, there was no flag. Watch the left heel, right? Seattle yeah, challenging the ruling on the field. If the receiver did not have two feet down in bounds. It should have been pass interference anyway. And the Giants get the ball here now because there's no flag. This could be a reversal and an incompletion to bring up second and ten. Well, it sure looks like it's going to be reversed. Pete Carroll, who doesn't challenge many calls, makes a good challenge here. So Reuben Randall could not get both feet down. It didn't look. Mike Pereira will put him to work. He's wearing a purple tie, so why not? Let's let's see him here early if we can. You look great. What do you think? Was that a catch or no? Thank you. No. I <laughs> okay. think not. Because you're going to get the you're going to get the right foot hit twice. It hits before the left foot. And I think the heels down out of bounds. And by the way, I do agree with you. It is pass interference and should have been called, but it wasn't. But to me, there's the heel hitting out of bounds, and I think that makes it incomplete. All right. Well, we didn't get to see him, so you'll have to just trust us. He looks great. Maybe we'll see him. <laughs> That's what I thought later. he was. Agreeing with you on that the purple tie looks good on him. Well, that's Vicky Trilling back there. She makes him look like a million dollars. Let's look at him. Here he is. The Dean Martin of officiating. Mike Pereira. There he is. Hi, Mike. There I go. <laughs> this is what happens when another game's in After overtime. reviewing the play, the play is incomplete. There you go. Mikey P is one for one, and that's not going to. They, there you can just read the lips. Where's the pass interference? That's, yeah. that's just a bad no call on the part of this crew. Should have gotten the call there. In fact, when they started having that a point of emphasis, the illegal contacts, the pass interferences, a lot of people thought then the Seahawks would get called a lot. They're one of the least penalized teams when it comes to those penalties, but clearly one was missed on that last play. Bad break for the Giants. Now with Michael Cox in the backfield, second and ten. to Reuben Randall. Leads out to the 25. Third down coming up. Simon on the stop. Gain of five. Well, they started working Odell Beckham, trying to go his way when Richard Sherman was on him. Now you've got Therald Simon, who has stepped in, and he's in the same mold as all these other corners that we've seen in Seattle over the years. He's tall, he's rangy, and he has played well when he's been asked to come into this lineup for the injured Byron Maxwell. Third down and five, and now we see this a lot here. 67, off there, five yard penalty, remains third down. That's Justin Pugh. And you get that a lot when you see a game here in Seattle. Since 2005, Troy, 100, now 34 opponents false starts because of the noise that these offensive lines have to deal with here in this stadium. Well, and you combine that with pass rushers like Michael Bennett and Cliff Averill, the noise and the speed makes it that much more difficult. Manning 
got a man. What a throw and a catch for a first down. Preston Parker, who turned his ankle last week, was plagued with drops, and this a beauty for 25. Yeah, it's an outstanding job because the Seahawks go press on the outside, and so you're allowed all that room to the sideline for the inside slot receiver when you work towards the boundary. Jeremy Lane, who has not played all season since week one, he was in coverage, but a great connection with Eli Manning and Preston Parker. What a throw that was from Manning. And now the handoff to Williams. And Andre Williams out near midfield. Picks up five yards. Jerron Johnson, who, by the way, is getting the start for Seattle in place of the injured Cam Chancellor. Out back to back weeks with a bad groin. Starting at free safety, made the stop. Well, that throw to Preston Parker, we haven't seen many of those connections by this New York Giants offense. That was, that was good to see, I'm sure, for Tom Coughlin. Second down, it's Williams. Penalty flag flies. A gain of four, a yard shy of a first down, but a flag was thrown. Holding, number 70 offense, 10 yard penalty remaining. Second down. That's Weston Richburg, who's made all nine starts now at left guard for the injured Jeff Schwartz. He turned his ankle last week, sprained it. Here he is, and guilty of. Well, a hold didn't look like there was a whole lot there. Well, he got beat, and you see he comes back and, and he grabs Some right jersey. there on Tony McDaniel. So, Weston Richburg, a young guy who's been asked to come in and be a starter, and as you would expect, it's been an up and down season. Delayed handoff to Hillis. Peyton Hillis is back near the original line of scrimmage, picked up for Michael Bennett on the stop. Well, Peyton Hillis has been a guy who has gotten some opportunities. He's primarily a third down back. He comes in in passing situations. When he has carried the ball for the last few weeks, he has really done a nice job with his opportunities. Now third down and 11. Over the middle, it's Hillis, and he's got a long way to go and will not get there. As Kevin Pierre Lewis was the first guy there, the rookie out of Boston College made the stop. Uh, New York Giants had a, had a nice drive going. They were able to get the running game going a little bit with Andre Williams to get the play to Parker, but then the penalties derail this drive. Ryan Walters was cut, re-signed. He's waiting for the punt from Weatherford, who's been dealing with a real bad back. And over end punt. Walters with a fair catch inside the 20. After a 33-yard punt, the fair catch for Walters, and we'll see Russell Wilson again. We welcome in a new audience. Majority of which was watching San Francisco beat New Orleans in overtime. Fast start. First possession for the Seahawks. Six plays, five first downs. Here's a big completion to the tight end, Helfit. And then from a yard out, Marshawn Lynch drives it in. And it's 7 to nothing Seattle. And you look at the NFC West. San Francisco now back over 500. Seattle here today trying to get to six and three. Pass is picked, intercepted, and that is the 12th for this defense of the Giants. It's Zach Bowman, and he stepped right in front of Paul Richardson. Uh, Russell Wilson, he has the shot, but you've got to get that ball then out on the boundary, and Zach Bowman, he's reading the quarterback the entire way. The ball's thrown behind him. He drives on the ball, and that's one area where this defense has been good this year is creating takeaways. As I said, that's the 12th for this defense, and that's the second of the year for Zach Bowman. 
Battling a stomach flu during the week. That's a big play for the Giants. Here's Beckham. And with a little left hand shot into the helmet of Richard Sherman, a gain of six. You know, last week, Joe, in that win over Oakland, there was some rain throughout the game. Russell Wilson really struggled, and he admitted as much. Balls got away from him. He worked this week on throwing a wet ball to overcome that. That last pass came out very well. It was just thrown behind. I don't think. The weather, because it is raining now, had anything to do with that. I think it was just a poor throw. Second and four pass is broken up for Donnell. And good defensive work by Jerron Johnson making his first NFL start. Now Larry Donnell, he's got a little bit of a height advantage in, in that seam route. You've got to be able to get it up a little bit. I know Eli would like to have that one back, but a ball that's thrown just behind him, had he been able to get up and allow Donnell to go up for it, he have a chance to make a play. Now third down and four. Manning has got the first down. Pass caught by Odell Beckham Jr. Coming off his first 100 yard game in the NFL, he gets seven and a fresh set of downs. Giants, the number six red zone team in the NFL. First down at the 10. Williams down to the six. A gain of four. And he talked about Odell Beckham in the game that he had. The other night with Victor Cruz going down they've really had to rely heavily on him. He had primarily been an outside receiver prior to Cruz's injury. Now he's been asked to do a lot of things. He's one of the only playmakers on this offense. Manning out to his right. Back of the end zone for the touchdown. Preston Parker. That's his first of the year, and with the extra point coming, a chance to tie it here in the first. It was good patience by Eli Manning because the Giants want to go across the field to Odell Beckham. They roll Eli Manning out to the right. They think they're going to have a shot back to the corner of the end zone to the left. The Seahawks read it, but because there was no pressure then on Eli Manning, he's able to hold the ball and wait for Preston Parker to create some separation. It's a great job of keeping the play alive and getting open for your quarterback. Nice bounce back for Preston Parker after a rough Monday night game against Indianapolis. Short week for the Giants, long trip. They got down seven to nothing, but the turnover leads to seven and a tie game in Seattle. Today's game is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. A little mist falling here in Seattle, and it's Preston Parker from six yards away to tie the game as he hung in there with Eli Manning. He's made some good throws here early. Russell Wilson throws the early interception. And for the Giants, who came in having been outscored 51 to 14 in the first quarter, they've tied it here on the road. Richardson on the return. He can really run. Slowed up by Brown, the kicker, and knocked down at the 23. It was the interception that set it up, and it was Zach Bowman who got that done. And then Eli Manning with a touchdown throw to Preston Parker for Manning, number 17 on the year. Tied at seven. Today's game is sponsored by Bud Light, who reminds fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. Just to pick up on what you were saying, Troy, after the interception by Russell Wilson, the wet ball and the conditions, something the Seahawks and Russell Wilson really focused on this week. Pass over the middle, caught, first down, and that's Doug Baldwin, who's trying to pick up the slack after the trade of Percy Harvin to the Jets. 
Yeah, Doug Baldwin, he's dealing with a groin injury of his own, so he's a little beat up, and that's the middle of the field where the Giants' defense has been vulnerable throughout this year. Under four to go, opening quarter. Turbin in the backfield next to Wilson. And Wilson keeps it. And will slide with a nice gain at the 45. Let's go to Kurt Menefee with the game break. All right, some of you left the Saints. Gordon Adams game in overtime, and this is how it ended. Drew Brees stripped. The rookie Chris Borland recovers for the 49ers. Very next play was ugly, but it was pretty if you're a 49ers fan. 35-yard field goal. Bill Dawson wins it 27-24 in OT. Joe Troy and Eric. Yeah, a huge gust of wind shot through the dome in New Orleans. That was ugly but effective. For Phil Dawson, a win for the 49ers. Here's Wilson again keeping it. And a little spin down inside the 45. Knocked down by Demps, a gain of 12. Just no contain whatsoever by New York. You're going to see the play action there. They're watching it from upstairs. They're letting the offensive coordinator, Daryl Bevel, know that the Giants are overplaying the pursuit on the backside of the running plays. And so Russell Wilson keeps it, and there's just nobody out there to contain him. Robert Ayers Jr. crashing down on the play, and Wilson picks up 12. Seahawks are over 11 yards picked up per play, and now you can subtract. Pressure by Ayers. He's been a nice pickup by the Giants, the former Bronco, a loss of eight. Well, it's a nice move. He's going up against the rookie, and he gets him going and then comes underneath and has a straight shot on Russell Wilson. He was one of the few bright spots in that loss last week. Fourth sack for Ayers. Just to finish with the wet ball, it's something Russell Wilson talked about with Warren Moon, who played collegiately up here at Washington. He talked about with his head coach, Pete Carroll. Needing to be more careful with the release on the throw. Turbin on second down, spins forward for five, brought down by Ayers. Well, it's something that had to be worked on. You know, Russell Wilson, for a guy who's not real tall, he does have large hands, and typically large hand people don't have problems throwing in inclement weather. I never could throw a wet ball, Joe, and the reason for that is you squeeze the ball too tight, and you've got to adjust your grip pressure if you're going to have any kind of success throwing it when it's wet. But Russell Wilson, as you said, he spent some time working on it this week, and the ball's come out much better. Third down and 13. Wilson hangs in, has got curse, but he overshoots it. Heavy pressure by Jason Pierre-Paul, and it's fourth down as Wilson had his man, got a hit, but threw it too far. And Russell takes a hit at the end of that play, but that was almost a big mistake by the New York Giants. You've got third and long, and you allow Curse to run in behind you for a big play. Russell Wilson just overshoots him, but that shouldn't happen in that situation for New York. Ryan punts it. Randall stays away and into the end zone it goes. And the third possession coming up for the Giants. Last time they had it tied at 7-7. 101 left in the first quarter. Today's Game on Fox is sponsored by the new comedy Horrible Bosses 2 in theaters November 26th by Burger King. For a limited time, get 10 chicken nuggets for just $1.49 and by Sprint. Gray day in Seattle. Peyton Hillis leaves. Word on him, he's finished for the day with a concussion. And Eli Manning, who came in with his highest quarterback rating ever, Sets up in the 20 in a tie game. And hands to the rookie town back Andre Williams, who gets nothing. A lot of discussion, Joe, about this offense. And Ben McAdoo is the offensive coordinator and the changes that everyone has had to make, especially Eli Manning. And they are a better offense than they were a year ago. I don't know how much that says. They struggled last season. But one area where they have definitely improved is with Eli not forcing the ball 
the way that he did when he led the league in interceptions last season. On second and ten. Manning's going to air it out. He's got a man and the catch made by Beckham. And Odell Beckham Jr. got behind Richard Sherman. And the rookie good for 44 yards. How about that throw and catch? Double move on the outside. He gets Richard Sherman running. You see the outside move and then up the field. And Eli Manning lays this out perfectly. If you're throwing the deep ball against Richard Sherman, you better get it out in front because anytime he has an opportunity to make a play on the ball, he generally intercepts it. An outstanding throw. How about that to the rookie Beckham? We're at the end of one tie game. Back after this from your local Fox Station. We start the second quarter. First down, Giants. At the 36, handoff, left side, Andre Williams. And a nice pickup on first down. Let's go back to the 44-yarder to Odell Beckham Jr. Well, good job by New York of moving the pocket and giving Eli Manning some time to allow this route to develop on the outside with the, with the double move on Richard Sherman, a guy who, as we pointed out, has gotten more throws against him here in the last couple of weeks, but you've got to be real precise with the football when you go his way. Had a pick last week against Oakland. His first of the year doesn't see a lot of action. Now second and three. Here's Beckham, right side, what a catch! This kid is becoming a star in a blink, only his fifth game. And he's down inside the five, working on Burley, a gain of 26. Well, it's double press on the outside, so you're gonna see him come here, and he's gonna go to the middle. And it allows all that field, then, for Odell Beckham to be able to make a play on the ball. It's the same route combination that we saw when Preston Parker made the play. They're on that earlier possession. Now Seattle has to take a timeout defensively. How about this catch by this kid? The 12th overall pick, maybe he'll be the best receiver taken in this past draft. First guy off the board was Sammy Watkins. In his fifth game, he's making a name. Odell Beckham Jr., first and goal when we come back. Today's Game on Fox is sponsored by Nissan. Innovation that excites. By Domino's. Oh, yes, we did. And by the all-new LG G3, the world's first smartphone with laser autofocus. Seattle has allowed only three rushing touchdowns all season. Odell Beckham Jr. has put him in position to take the lead. Hand off. Down inside the one. His fourth in his rookie season, and Andre Williams has put the Giants on top. Not quite as dramatic as Marshawn Lynch's run last week against Oakland, but this is really impressive because there is contact made on Andre Williams at the line of scrimmage, and the job that he does in continuing to move his legs and move the pile and break a tackle and get into the end zone is impressive. It's a great job of finishing this drive. Andre came in averaging under three yards per carry, which was the lowest in the NFL. It's the two big completions of 44 and 26 yards to Odell Beckham Jr. that set it up. And Andre Williams good from three yards out. 14 to 7. What a draft it was for the wide receiver position this past May. And Odell Beckham Jr. making a name on the road. Got him in position. Giants up seven. Off his first 100 yard game, and Odell Beckham Jr. with two big catches. And then watch the work done by JD Walt. Free agent pickup from the Broncos. He gets an assist on the touchdown as he just rips Andre Williams into the end zone for the lead. Well, those are tough yards for Andre Williams, and there has not been a lot of daylight for him since he has stepped in for Rashad Jennings. The offensive line has done a better job here in the early going against a pretty good run defense of the Seattle Seahawks. Richardson waits for the kick. 
Josh Brown, a former Seahawk, hits it into the back of the end zone. Fox and Fox Sports 1, the place to turn Saturday for a full day of conference rivalries, including games with playoff implications. Washington takes on 19th-ranked Arizona, 6th-ranked TCU, squares off against Kansas. It all begins 3 Eastern on Fox, Fox Sports 1, and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Your Bruins, you were there yesterday, beat Washington. The Dogs, the Huskies, 44 to 30. That was a nice win for the Bruins. A nice treat for me to be here in Seattle and get a chance to watch the alma mater play. Well, that stadium, they've done a nice job on Husky Stadium. That's gorgeous. From the 20, it's Lynch. Right through the heart of the defense and a first down for Marshawn Lynch. Gain of 13. Look at some of the stats, and within those numbers, Eli Manning started one for four. He's shown a lot of touch since then. He's gone eight for nine with 125 yards and a touchdown. Yeah, and the bigger part of that is they've been able to get the ball down the field. They've been able to create big plays. That was once a staple for this offense, but it opens up a lot of other things when you're able to get the ball down the field. Here's Turbin, a nice run on first down. Just inches across the 40, picks up six, Antrell roll on the stop. You know, I thought it was interesting in visiting with the Seahawks on Friday and, you know, talking with Pete Carroll and how this year has been a struggle. You know, it's been, not that last year was easy, it's never easy, but they have had to battle, fight and claw and do it with a number of guys hurt. And it is different when you're the world champion and then the expectations change for a ball club, even within your own locker room. Here's Turbin again. Ball comes out. It is recovered by Giants. Say they have it. This could be the second Seattle turnover of the opening half. It was knocked out by Jameel McClain. And we'll see who's at the bottom of the pile with the football. There's McLean knocking it out. And it belongs to the Giants. Second turnover. New York has it and a seven point lead. Today's game is sponsored by Pizza Hut. Find the best deals at PizzaHut.com. It's been a different big play look to this Giants offense here in Seattle today. First down. Williams swallowed up in the backfield. And the play was made by Brandon Meebane. Loss of one back to the fumble. You'll see McLean with that left hand knock it out. And Jamil McLean, he does a great job of knocking it out. Entrail roll recovers it. And Robert Turbin, he had a nice gain on the play, too. The offensive line did an excellent job. But Jamil McLean has had to move around a little bit. With the injury to John Beeson, now he's playing in the middle. He's probably been their best defensive player this year. On second and 11, pass is caught Randall, and he gets hit hard by K.J. Wright. Flag is thrown. And it's against the Giants. Pass interference, number 83, offense, 10-yard penalty. Still second down. They get Preston Parker, who was out there trying to block for Reuben Randall. Yeah, you're going to see Preston Parker. He's blocking down the field when the ball was thrown. You're given a yard. They are pretty lenient in calling that. That's a big staple of the Packers offense where Ben McAdoo came from. You don't see that call very often. Second down and 21. Eli Manning came into this game with only two completions of 21 yards in the air or more all year. He's got three today. Trying to set up a screen. Pass is no good. Incomplete. Pass intended for Andre Williams, who has a touchdown. Let's go to Kurt Menefee with a game break. 
Well, usually the St. Louis Rams take the lead. They did today, and usually the other team comes back. This time it's Arizona behind Andre Ellington's three-yard score. Tied at seven in the big NFC West matchup. I'm sure Seahawks fans want to keep an eye on them. Of course, they've got bigger issues right now, Joe and Troy. Yeah, they do, down by seven. And now third and 21. Out of the backfield, it's Michael Cox. He crosses midfield, that's it, fourth down coming up. K.J. Wright on the tackle. He was active last week against Oakland. K.J. Wright back at his normal spot at weak side linebacker as they wait for the return of Malcolm Smith, the MVP of the Super Bowl, out again with a bad groin. Yeah, that linebacker position, they, they've lost some key guys. The fact that they, are, they have so much depth to save them in being able to overcome them. Walters with a fair catch at the 15-yard line, where Seattle will have it. Back to the field, Russell Wilson down seven. An emotional moment before the game is Tama, the Hawk, went rogue. When Hawks go wild, not really emotional, just interesting on the I mean, poor guy's head can you imagine that no You're just watching a game and a hawk lands on your head and then he, he summons up the courage to <laughs> nice <play. laughs> he was nice fell he wasn't real confident reaching out <laughs> i wouldn't be either. no way from the 15 down by seven keeping it is russell wilson wilson with a big one out across the 40. And it seems like this play is there any time the Seahawks want to run it. Well, either Jason Pierre-Paul or Stevie Brown had to be in contain. JPP, he collapses. Stevie Brown goes with the fake as well. He's the safety dropping in. And you can see there's just nobody there. Man coverage on the outside. When you're playing Russell Wilson, you've got to know that's a big part of what they do offensively. And that's twice now. They have failed to contain Wilson. That's defensive coordinator Perry Fuel. They got to figure that out. As Lynch played well up front, Roll and Brown both there for the defense, no gain. And for Perry Fuel, this defense is allowing over 26 points per game and over 390 yards per game. That's the highest in franchise history. Injury is a big part of that with this secondary three corners on IR. And so they're just trying to piece it together. Yeah, I think even the bigger part of it all is that when you think of when the Giants have been good on defense, they have gotten after the quarterback with pressure and they just haven't been able to get enough out of Jason Pierre Paul and Matthias Kiwanuka. Just got it away. Handoff is to Lynch. And on second down, Lynch just does not go down ever easily. He picks up eight. Looks really pretty incredible when you consider his style. Here in his eighth season, and he's still running as physical as he is. I mean, that type of runner is, is going to take a pounding, and yet he shows up each week, and he's in the lineup doing a great job. Bothered by bad calf during the week. Got two days off of practice. Running like he's fine. Here he is again. Goes right around the defensive player. That was Williams, Jaquan Williams. And by the time Williams gets him out of bounds, it's a gain of eight and another Seahawk first down. Well, it's a good scheme that time by Perry Fuel. You're going to see Jaquan Williams, he comes off the edge. And so initially, who Russell Wilson is reading collapses. He thinks then he's going to get the edge once again like he has. But Jaquan Williams as the linebacker off the ball, their most athletic linebacker, he can run with Russell Wilson. He does a nice job. Wilson is set. Brought down in the backfield. Hankins was there. He wasn't alone. And a loss of four. Jonathan Hankins right here in the middle. There's pressure off the edge. And so it forces Russell Wilson to step up. And Hankins, who 
wins on it. They're trying to set up the screen. Russell not able to get the ball out of his hands. Hankins on him too soon. Been under pressure by this Giants defense. Second and 14, handoff to Lynch. Lynch breaks one, two tackles. And by the time he's brought down, a gain of 10. More manageable third down for this Seattle offense. And they come in at under 40% on third down, ranked 22nd in the NFL. Yeah, they've not been good really all season long, Joe. The only the only game this year where they've really been good on third down was against the Rams. They have been consistently poor in converting these situations. On third down and four, Wilson keeps it. Well played, Brown. The ball comes out. Wilson back on top of it. It's fourth down. Stevie Brown was up there defending for the Giants, and he made the play. It looked like they were trying to come underneath to Lynch on the pitch. As they fake it to him, Russell Wilson comes out. It looks like he maybe wanted to go to Lynch underneath, but Jason Pierre-Paul was in a position, and then he's just trying to juke out Stevie Brown. So a good job there defensively by the Giants, and the Seattle Seahawks are going for it. They pass on a 54-yard try to go for it on fourth and three. And now three out of five on the year are the Seahawks going for it on fourth down. Well, they motion curse and they run the natural picking action. You're playing man coverage in this fourth and short. You see the job that the defender has to do to try to overcome it and opens up curse for an easy completion and conversion. See, Will Tukuafu, the big fullback, second week with Seattle, former 49er. He's in front of Kristen Michael. Wilson keeps it right side. Russell Wilson slides down shy of the 15-yard line. That's the first time we've seen him try that side, and it was wide open a gain of 13. Yeah, and was it Matthias Kiwanuka or the linebacker? Here's Kiwanuka, or does the linebacker have to scrape? One of those two guys has to contain the quarterback, and it looked to me like it was Jaquan Williams who had the responsibility, but one of those two guys busted and just seen it too many times. Seahawks with 66 rushing yards on this drive. Tenth play of the drive. Wilson keeps it. Well protected. End zone. Too high. Incomplete for Cooper Helfen, who has one catch in this game. And now Luke Wilson is going to limp away. And that's a position the Seahawks are working without their top tight end, Zach Miller. Yeah, they've been thin at the tight end position. They're trying to get to help it and, and a ball that was a little high got away from Russell Wilson a little bit. Here comes Luke Wilson. They picked up Tony Mwaka this past week, but he's inactive, Joe. So help it is the only tight end who's now healthy in this game if Luke Wilson can't come in and play. There's help at number 84. Under four and a half to go, first half. Here's Lynch. Lynch fights his way to the 10. Have you seen a better tackle breaker in the last, put a number on it, 15, 20 years in Marshawn Lynch? This guy's unbelievable. Jaquan Williams comes up and tries to make a play, and Marshawn Lynch just gores him right in the chest and keeps his legs going and picks up another three to four yards. Everybody remembers that run against the Saints. It was just ridiculous in the postseason. But it's a weekly event with him. Well, that run last week, you won't see a better three-yard run in your entire life. It was impressive. Third down and four. Quick throw. Pass caught inside the five. First and goal as Doug Baldwin is there for the catch. 
That's a really good job. You see Doug Baldwin point to Russell Wilson because this is a well-thrown ball. When you're in traffic as a receiver, you want the ball low to where you can make the catch and protect yourself. Russell Wilson delivers it perfectly. Keeps Doug Baldwin from taking a big hit. Is it going to be Lynch? He's got one today. He gets it here. Marshawn Lynch fighting two inches away. They're going to mark him inside the one. First guy there, Jameel McClain, and you talked about last week, Troy, and here's that touchdown run by Marshawn Lynch. Yeah, it wasn't quite as dynamic as the playoff run against New Orleans, but look how he just keeps going and moves the pile. He was not going to be denied. I think I'd come back to him right here, too. Lynch stumbled. Never got a chance to get it going. Lost a yard. Third and goal coming up. And we'll be at the two minute warning when they snap it on third and goal. Good game in Seattle. Giants upset. Follow your favorite team all season long. Go to iTunes.com slash NFL. The Seahawks talk about how they want to get better inside the red zone. Ranked 25th in the NFL. They had second and goal from inside the one. Now third and goal from the two. Longest drive this season for the Seahawks in time and plays. Lynch, his second of the day. Well, they bring in the sixth offensive lineman, Gary Gilliam, and he does an excellent job of collapsing Matthias Kiwanuka. And then you've got Antrell Roll, who has to play the quarterback or collapse on Marshawn Lynch. He's not going to be right. It's an excellent job finishing off one heck of a drive. You saw Tom Cable welcome Marshawn Lynch back to the sideline. What a job he's done in piecing this offensive line together, and the game is tied. 13th career multi-touchdown game for Marshawn Lynch and what's now a tie game on America's Game of the Week. Eli Manning's had a nice day and a tough place to play. Andre Williams has a touchdown. Odell Beckham Jr. 84 yards already. Giants three timeouts. Parker makes a nice catch. They're going to give him four yards. Jerron Johnson on the tackle for Seattle. It affects him a little bit, Joe. The Giants with Peyton Hillis out for the rest of the game with a concussion. They've been having to go now with Michael Cox in passing situations here in the no huddle. Second and six. Manning steps into it, has Beckham. And Odell Beckham Jr.'s got a first down across the 30, a gain of seven. You know, now you got to see how that's going to impact them because Pete Carroll, he's certainly aware of that. Then you try to take advantage of a running back who maybe hasn't played a lot in pass protection situations. Timeout taken by the Giants with a minute 27 to go in the half down to Aaron Andrews. Well, Joe, Seattle's defense been dealing with their fair share of injuries all season long. They just got another one. Tackle Brandon Meebay done for today with a right hamstring injury. For their offense, tight end Luke Wilson, he's questionable return with an ankle injury. All right. We saw him limp away, and they are thin at that position right now for Seattle. Yeah, Brandon Meebane, he is... You know, really an important player there on the inside. He's got great quickness. He's physical. He's probably having his best season, so that's a, that's a significant loss for this defense. On 
first down pass caught by Donnell. Meanwhile we saw Beckham turn Richard Sherman all the way around on that previous completion. And they've been throwing teams have been throwing at Richard Sherman the last three weeks more than they did the first six games. Here's Eli somehow getting away pass is caught by Michael Cox no gain third down coming up here's that Odell Beckham Junior and he is really impressive working really all day Troy on Richard Sherman well that's where Eli wanted to go with the football but thought he had man to man coverage was going to have a lane and then Jeremy Lane got underneath the throw and was fortunate to be able to get that out without taking a sack. The clock is stopped because they called that last pass incomplete. So third and four. And now before the snap, they blew it dead. Please set the game clock to 59 seconds. We'll read you the previous play. That's a bad break for the Giants as they blew that dead before the snap to reset the game clock, and that's not going to make Tom Coughlin happy. No, he's he's not happy and would like a little more notice on that, but they did let up. Seattle did, which allowed Odell Beckham then to become as open as he was. That was an example of now how they've used him. He lined up in the slot on that last play. Eli had a big first half at Washington earlier this year. This is a good one in Seattle. On third down and four. Pass is incomplete, but a flag is thrown. Parker was the receiver. And both Thomas and Lane where they're defending for Seattle. Holding number 20 defense five yard penalty automatic first down. Now they're trying to get it to Preston Parker. It's the same look that we've seen him hit now a couple times once to Parker once to Odell Beckham Junior. There was contact by Jeremy Lane and they get the penalty and they get the first down. That's the first Seahawk penalty of the game. Handoff is to Cox and Michael Cox out across the 45 and whistles after the play as a timeout is taken by the Giants. O'Brien Schofield on the stop. Coming up it's the Visa halftime report in honor of Veterans Day. Instead of Kurt we go to Fort Benning Georgia to find out what's coming up on the Visa halftime. Coming up at halftime, we'll check out all the highlights from this Sunday's football. Did Payne Manning and the Broncos bounce back against the Raiders? Is that even a question? Ooh. We'll find out at the half. <laughs> Thanks to the guys and gals at Fort Benning. Some good late games, including Arizona trailing St. Louis and a tight one with Denver and Oakland. Good one here, tied at 14, second and six. Blitz. Giants pick it up. Pass caught. Parker again. And Parker wrestled down at the 39 yard line, a gain of 14. After a slow start, one for four, Manning has been outstanding. Sideline to now. And he hops out of bounds with 26 seconds left in a game of seven. Uh, Michael Cox steps up and does a good job in pass protection. I brought that up a moment ago. Those are the things you've got to be able to do to help out your quarterback. He has some time and Preston Parker is off to a nice start to this game in the first half. Being able to create some separation and catch the football. It'd be a 50 yard field goal from this spot in case you're wondering and you can now add a first down to Donnell and Manning will clock it after a completion of seven the ball at the 25. 
Well, you really have to be impressed with the way this offense is clicking and the way Eli Manning is throwing the ball. It's been brilliant. This is a good defense that they're facing, and yet they have executed very well. It's been an offense that's been inconsistent. Sometimes they look like world beaters, and other times they have really struggled. But you see the job that these receivers have done. Other than Odell Beckham last week, they were not very good against Indianapolis, but all of them have made the plays and have given Eli Manning places to go with the football. Second and ten, they hand it off. Michael Cox not willing to take a shot into the end zone. They're just going to settle for a field goal try after a gain of two. Yeah, I thought they might take one shot, but I think Tom Coughlin pretty happy with the job that they did offensively, putting themselves in a position to come away with three points and a possible lead at half. Josh Brown was the seventh round pick by the Seahawks in 03. It was here through 07, St. Louis, 08 through 11. A year in Cincinnati, now second year with the Giants. There's the group. Weatherford holding and Zach Diossi, a two time Pro Bowler, snapping it. It'll be a 41 yard attempt for a halftime lead for the Giants. Who saw this first half coming in Seattle? Brown is perfect. And the Giants on the road. Coming in having lost three in a row. Lead the Seahawks by three. It's America's game of the week and it's a good one. Seattle and New York. It's the FISA halftime coming up right now. To LA we go. Here's Kurt and the guys. The Seahawks or the Mariners. Eddie Vedder, Pearl Jam with Breed. Today's excitement brought to you by Nissan and Eli Manning. There's the first half. Tough to do it here on the road in Seattle, but he made some great throws, showed great touch, and found his rookie, Odell Beckham Jr., who was rapidly in just his fifth game. And battling a bad hamstring, really stepping forward as a young star. Yeah, a young guy who missed all of offseason work, training camp, so he's young by any measurement, but especially considering the amount of work that he missed coming in to this year. Aaron Andrews was bugging those coaches on their way in or out at halftime. What do you have, Aaron? Pretty good moods by both of them. Tom Coughlin said we had been preaching faster start all week long, and we finally got it. He said we had to improve somewhere. He also mentioned with Peyton Hillis out where it affects the team. He said it really hurts them on third down, and they've just got to go with the guys that they have. Pete Carroll mentioning the biggest thing for his defense, they have to get to Eli Manning faster. They have to pressure him. I said, what about Odell Beckham, coach? He said, yeah, we'll take care of that, too. Well, we'll see. Sporty. It's a sporty look here in Seattle with the rain falling intermittently. And here we go again. Russell Wilson keeps it. It's going to slide. And with a slide, he picks up only nine. But that play has worked time and time again on the edge. Yeah, you're going to see Gary Gilliam, though, the extra lineman. He comes in. It looked like a design run because he then squares up to try to block the contained guy but I don't even know that he was necessary because they were going to get on the edge anyway and I'm really surprised that Perry Fuel and this Giants defense after having been beaten on that a few times in the first half still have yet to come up with an answer especially coming out after halftime here's Lynch and, and he just bounces right off the tackle has a first down and is brought down in midfield he went right through Jameel McLean and picks up 22. Uh, that was nothing more than a speed bump for Marshawn Lynch. That's pretty amazing watching him run right through Jamil McLean and barely even lose stride. That's impressive. You can 
Jamil McLean, 6'1, 245. As you said, he barely even got knocked off stride. 22 yards. Here's Baldwin trying to get a block from Curse. That didn't work. Loss of one. McLean made the stop. Well, we had a chance to visit with Doug Baldwin, and I know these receivers for a number of years now have been a little frustrated with how they are perceived around the league as not being guys who can really beat a lot of people within the passing game. It's certainly a philosophy here in Seattle that they're going to run the ball, but last year they were still able to get big plays down the field, and those have been hard to come by for this Seattle passing attack. Here's Lynch right side. Never seems to go backward after a hit. He's down inside the 45. Picks up six. You look at the receiving yards and out on the edge where these guys rank. These are the two leaders on each side coming in at 51 and 67 across the entire NFL. Yeah, when you look at receiving yards, then you know they definitely they don't have a bell cow within their receiving core, as we know, and that's what that graphic illustrates. They spread the ball around and they don't throw it much, as I said, anyway. Then when they spread it out like they do, you've got guys who are ranked pretty far down. Timeout Seattle, first team timeout. Timeout taken by Russell Wilson. Prior to a third down here with the Seahawks down three. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. By Ford. Beautiful things happen when you go further. By the new Samsung Galaxy Note 4. The next big thing is here. And by PapaJohns.com, where there's always better deals on better pizza. It's the Pinball Museum here in Seattle. Here is Russell Wilson trying to call a timeout. Pete Morelli didn't see it the first time. They do so many hand signals at the line of scrimmage. I think Morelli knew that was a timeout. Now it's third and five. Wide snap. Wilson down the middle for Baldwin, and he's picked. Intercepted for the second time. It's Demps. And Quentin Demps has the third interception of his season. And the Giants take over the third turnover by Seattle. Not necessarily a bad decision, Joe, just a poor throw. Demps reads it, but if he lays the ball to the corner over the outside shoulder of Doug Baldwin, he's got a chance to try to go get it. Russell Wilson had to have seen Quentin Demps back there playing safety and underthrows the ball and an easy interception then for Quinn Demps. You see how much field he had to work had he have led him out towards the sideline over his left shoulder, but just a poor throw by Russell Wilson. That's the second one for an interception. Sixth straight start for Quinn Demps. And he's got his third pick. On the left side, it's Andre Williams. And he's out across the 15, knocked down by Earl Thomas. You know, Russell Wilson, talk during the week told us that last week he just didn't play well and he thought even though they beat Oakland it was a lot they left out there he was disappointed and he's thrown two interceptions he's six for ten 82 yards been another poor day yeah he has struggled Joe I mean he has for the most part the last four weeks he has not played at the level that we're used to seeing out to his right Manning to the sideline, he had Beckham, but skipped it in. Third and four. Eli got hit hard at the end. Yeah, he did, and he knew he was going to take a hit. When he turned it loose, Cliff Averill right there. He had Beckham, could not get it out there. Has not been sacked, third down and four. Pass caught, first down, that's Parker. They're going to give him forward progress out to the 22. 
And now a couple of the players start to fight, and that's where the flag comes in. It happened, it appeared after the play, after the first down was picked up by Parker. And Pete Morelli, who is a principal at a high school in Stockton, California, will try and sort it out. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 72, defense, 15-yard penalty, added to the end of the run, automatic first down. That's Michael Bennett. So, Troy, you talked about it at the beginning as you watch what happened at the end of it. He gets on the rookie, Weston Richburg. That looks like a good call. Let's see what preceded it. But this is a defense in Seattle. It's forced 10 turnovers this year. They had 39 force last year and 11 sacks. That's it. They had 44 a year ago. It's a first down out at the 37. And off is to Andre Williams. Brought down by McDaniel, a gain of two. Well, you look at this defense, Joe, and, and you're right. I mean, in recent weeks, they've been able to create some takeaways, which has certainly helped them. They got the turnovers last week against the Raiders, but they've just not been able to dominate the line of scrimmage and pressure the quarterback the way that you're used to seeing, especially here at home. Second down, Manning protected down the sideline. Flags thrown as Randall was held. And it was Therald Simon who had hands on him. Well, Reuben Randall was looking immediately for a flag. You said Therald Simon was in coverage. And he got it. So let's see what happened. There's the grab. So for a defensive back. There are two fouls on the defense, holding number 23. That penalty be declined. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 92. 15-yard penalty, automatic. First down. Well, they, they say it's against Meebane, but he's not out there. And then they said the holding was against 23. It certainly looked like it was against Simon 27. Either way, it's a personal foul. The second on this drive against the defense for the Seahawks and the balls inside Seattle territory. Yeah, I think they got the numbers wrong, Joe. So for a secondary that's been good throughout the year of not being penalized like that, they've had a few calls now against them for holding an illegal contact. Delayed handoff, it's Williams. And Andre Williams on first down gets three brought down by Jerron Johnson. We talked about Andre Williams. A little bit earlier, and there's a late flag, Troy. We'll get the call from Morelli. Holding number 70, offense, 10 yard penalty. Still first down. It's Richburg. And he's working against Michael Bennett, and that's the one who drew the penalty earlier. For the Seattle Seahawks. So a lot going on there in the trenches between the Giants and the Seahawks. That moves the ball back to the 44 and brings up first and 20. Giants have had a few good drives going. They had a couple there in the first half where they had things going, and then penalties stalled those drives to see if they can overcome first and 20. and takes it to the 45-yard line. What a good throw from Manning. It was a good throw, and it's a good job of Reuben Randall knowing against zone coverage when you're running that quick slant route, there are going to be bodies there, and there's going to be some punishment involved, especially when you've got to extend yourself to make the catch. I've been impressed with what I've seen of Reuben Randall and Preston Parker, as I said, coming off a tough game a week ago and talked about all week long. They have played well in this game.
Blitz aired out for Randall. Pass out of bounds. Incomplete. Sherman defending. Here's Joel Klatt with the game break. Hey, Joe, to Oakland, where the winless Raiders facing the Denver Broncos. And on fourth and one, it's Peyton Manning to Julius Thomas, his second of the day, 12th on the season, leads the NFL. Broncos up 34-10. Back to Seattle, Joe, Troy, and Aaron. So that is turning into a blowout, as you would expect. That's third and nine. Manning. Pass is incomplete for Randall. It's fourth down. And a good stop defensively. That hold was a big call against Weston Richburg. Richburg rather on this drive. Yeah, those are costly penalties, and it's it's not often that you're able to overcome first and 20, and the Giants unable to do so. They're gonna give the ball back to Seattle. Weatherford battling a bad back. This is coming back. False start against the Giants. One of the gunners on the outside started too soon. Neutral zone infraction, number 27 defense, five yard penalty remains, fourth down. So evidently drawn off the guy across from him, that was Simon. He jumped across and that makes it five yards closer and may change the thinking of Tom Coughlin. They're going to move the ball to the 40. Now you're looking at fourth and four. But they keep the punt unit out there. Yeah, I think this is the right decision. Flip field position and make Seattle go the hard way. And over end punt. Walters gets away from it and it goes into the end zone. So they only net 20 yards of field position. Eli thought he had one misfired on that last throw. Seahawks have it down three. In honor of Veterans Day for every point scored during the NFL's 32 salute to service games, the league will donate $100 to each of its nonprofit partners, the Pat Tillman Foundation, USO, the Wounded Warrior Project. Veterans Day coming up this week on Tuesday. And how about the 49ers? They blew a 14 to nothing lead, came back and won that game in overtime. A big completion from Colin Kaepernick toward the end of regulation. That may have saved their season. They're now five and four instead of four and five. Here's Baldwin. On a little toss from Wilson. A nice stagger out on the edge. He gets 11 and a first down. And we look at the NFC West with Arizona leading, but at the moment trailing at home to St. Louis, 14 to 10. Yeah, you look at the West and where it stands, and that was a huge win for San Francisco on the road, a very difficult place to play. New Orleans seemed to have gotten things going in the right direction themselves, and to be able to hang on, even when that game went into overtime and win was big. Big defensive play won that game. Here's Lynch. First down with the rain falling again in Seattle. Picks up three. First guy there was Kiwanuka. Well, you watch this game for Seattle, and you know, really all they've been able to do is run the football. They've not had much success throwing the ball. Marshawn Lynch has been outstanding once again, and then Russell Wilson, he's added to it without much containment by the New York Giants, but they have had to rely heavily on this run game because the passing game just has not really been there. Wilson's only attempted 11 passes. He's thrown two interceptions. This one is knocked down. It's incomplete forward pass. Third down coming up. Jason Pierre-Paul, who made some noise this week by saying this team needs more heart. You had a chance to visit with Tom Coughlin, and he went not overboard, but was very emphatic to say he is happy with the effort of his Giants team. Yeah, coaches don't like hearing that their team's not giving effort. and. It's hard to get enthusiastic and excited when you're losing the way they were on Monday night. But Tom Coughlin is happy with the effort. But they definitely need to find a way to win a ball game. They've been on the losing end for too many weeks. Now third down and seven. 
in the rain. Wilson in trouble. And going to float it downfield. Got Kurtz. First and goal. And that's the beauty of what Russell Wilson can do. Kept it alive and found Curse for 60 yards. Well, that's the, the route that this Giants defense has really had problems with. They, they run the deep crossing route to Curse. Jaquan Williams is back there in coverage. He sees him. He then has to try to pick him up. Jermaine Curse keeps the play alive, and Russell Wilson puts it on him. Jameel McLean had a shot of the sack. And then Wilson did the rest. Here's Lynch. Marshawn Lynch. They're going to mark him down just shy of the goal line. Second and goal. Take another look. Check out the knee, the arm. That's a good call. That sure is. Here's another look at that last play. And Jermaine Curse, 15. Running right through the middle of the defense. Jaquain Williams needs to pick him up. And it's just too much for him. You that's talk a, to, yeah, that's that, that middle of the field route that you see run a lot against the Giants with a great deal of success. Lynch looking for his third touchdown. He, his helmet comes off. And when a helmet comes off, the play is dead right at that moment. So even fighting for extra yardage as Jameel McLean made the stop. He holds Lynch out of the end zone. It's third and goal. Well, that's impressive by the Giants. You know, we've seen what Marshawn Lynch can do when he gets down here around the goal line. Jamil McLean and the rest of them come in and are able to keep him from getting into the goal line. That's impressive. So now third and goal. Movement. Call start, number 24, offense. Five-yard penalty still, third down. Lynch was going out for a pass. Yeah, I think Marsh, uh, Marshawn Lynch was going to be the primary receiver. They go motion the other way, and Lynch leaves a little bit too early, but he was going to come out into the flat, and now and they're right there knocking on the door, and now they're going to be looking at a longer down situation, but you see Marshawn Lynch, and J.R. Sweezy moved a little bit early as well at right guard. And moves it back to the six. They split Lynch out wide to the bottom of the screen. Wilson. Trying to make something out of nothing. Flips it incomplete. As that little flip took off. And a good job by this Giants defense to hold on a first and goal. Well, Jason Pierre-Paul, he's the one who disrupts the timing of the throw. And now flag comes in very late. The officials got together to see, I believe, if Russell Wilson crossed the line of scrimmage when he flipped it. We have an illegal forward pass. The quarterback number three was beyond the line of scrimmage. By rule, it's a five-yard penalty and loss of down. Fourth down. So it's fourth down. It may not make a difference in the end, but the quarterback's entire body and the ball has to be across the line of scrimmage. It looked like that right foot was still back on the line. Yeah, I don't think they got the call right, but as you said, it doesn't make much sense to throw the challenge flag. Pete Carroll challenged one already. He was right. He would be right on this one. But it's pretty negligible. Just a 28-yard try here for Hauschka to tie it. Tie game. With under five to go in the third quarter. Russell Wilson got him down in position. The 60-yarder to Kirsch set him up. Tied at 17. Today's game is sponsored by Exodus Gods and Kings, December 12th, only in theaters. Week 10 continues with Sunday Night Football tonight. 
And a good matchup, Chicago and Green Bay. That's at 8.30 Eastern on NBC. And tomorrow, Monday Night Football on ESPN, Carolina and Philadelphia. Cowboys won today. Philadelphia started the day in first at 6-2 and two in the NFC East. Dallas with their win now 7-3. and three. Seahawks had a second and goal at the one. Could not pound it in. Michael Cox will take a knee and the drive will start for the Giants. At the 20, the defense is stepping up. Playing with some heart here in Seattle. You can see the range picked up. 413 left third quarter here in Seattle tie game. Here's Williams. Swallowed up in the backfield, lost a couple. Bennett, the first guy there. When you look at this run defense, Joe, as the Giants are in there, no huddle. But the Seahawks' run defense overall has been really good. They were outstanding against Darren McFadden last week. That's going to be important as they move through the rest of this game. Giants really miss Rashad Jennings out for the fourth straight game with a bad knee. On his way back, not active today. Pass is caught. That's Randall. And Randall out to the 26. A gain of eight, Byron Maxwell, who's back. You see him limping, number 41. He missed the last three games with a bad calf. Now third and four. Seahawks playing without their middle linebacker Bobby Wagner and their weak side linebacker Malcolm Smith. Cam Chancellor as well. Pass is caught. Parker stays up. He's got a first down and more out across the 45. Preston Parker has had a terrific game after a rough one on Monday. Well, he sure has, and the job that he does, not only making the catch, but Earl Thomas comes in and just torpedoes him, and he bounces off of him and is able to turn that into a significant game. You see the hurry-up attack. This is Williams, and the rookie takes it into Seattle territory, picks up five. Hey, we talked about Russell Wilson and you know him throwing the ball in inclement weather. Eli Manning has thrown some great passes here today with a pretty steady rain throughout the game. Look at that, six for six. Second down and five, Williams. Third down and short coming up as Kevin Pierre Lewis makes the stop, a gain of three by Andre. Big third down. is caught Beckham first down Odell Beckham Jr. to the 39 his first catch of this second half you got to respect the speed of Odell Beckham so you see as Richard Sherman is on him he's giving him a little bit of a cushion hoping for a little underneath help Odell Beckham he turns around and it's a pretty easy completion for Eli Manning back to back 100 yard games for Beckham Jr. Manning keeps it, going for it all. Beckham in the end zone, picked off. Intercepted by Thomas. Earl Thomas back the other way. Outside the 40. Joe, this is what I was talking about earlier. When you go against Richard Sherman, you got to be real careful on the deep throw. Beckham having to try to play defense here, tips it up. Earl Thomas is able to come away with the pick. For Thomas, his first of the year, and a big time for the Seahawks. Well, it had been
been a good run for Eli Manning. He came in not having thrown a pick in 145 straight pass attempts. Well, they've had success throwing the ball against Richard Sherman, but when you throw the deep ball, it was late. It's underthrown, and Beckham's just trying to keep Richard Sherman from making a play on the ball. And these secondary players, the safeties, they pursue the football when it's in the air. Earl Thomas, giving great hustle to the ball, is able to be there off of the ref the reflection. And I think that's the first poor decision that Eli Manning has made throwing the ball in this game. Here's a handoff to Turbin. Turbin crosses the 45. There's life for the Seahawks as they get their first takeaway. And it's Earl Thomas, the three-time Pro Bowler, waiting for the tip off the hand of Beckham Jr. With Richard Sherman defending, and it was 176 consecutive pass attempts for Eli Manning. Longest stretch in his NFL career without an interception. It ends right there. Last 10 seconds of the third quarter, and it's Lynch, a yard shy of a first down. That's the end of quarter number three. Manning, the interception, his sixth of the year, and it's Thomas who got it. Back after this from your local Fox station. Into the fourth we go. Running the ball for Seattle, no reason to change now. Tie game, start of the fourth quarter. It's the most against the Giants this year, 204. And with a win here today, Russell Wilson would become the first quarterback ever with wins over both Eli and Peyton Manning in the same season in back-to-back -back right. years. Well, <laughs> a toss to Michael. Kristen Michael down inside the 35. 18-yard carry from Michael. That's his season long. Now this Jason Pierre-Paul. He crashes. It's just another way to exploit the edge of this defense. You show the play one way, and if you're not going to contain, then you get on the edge, and that's been throughout this game where the Giants have been vulnerable. Looking for somewhere to go. Takes off. A big day running the football. Russell Wilson, who became the first player in the history of the league to have a 300 yard passing day and a 100 yard rushing day in the same game on October 19th in St. Louis in a loss, has been able to carry it nine times for 89 yards while he's thrown it for just 153 with two picks. Season high, 233 rush yards today for Seattle. Lynch. Marshawn Lynch. Inside the five to the three. It's a great job by this offensive line, Joe, but a good finish by Marshawn Lynch, and he's for a power runner he really has great moves he sets up his receiver very well on the block you see the move there to the outside he's a complete back and as we've seen last week and to start this game he can catch the ball and do some things in the passing game as well how about 250 rush yards against the Giants today for Seattle fake it to Lynch Wilson slides through, throws, incomplete for the rookie Paul Richardson. When you come in and to make a play on, on Russell Wilson, it's so hard. You can't be too aggressive because he's going to make you miss, as he does there. He had a chance on Richardson, and, and just a throw that was unable to give him a catchable ball. You talk to any scout, which our editorial consultant Steve Horn does, and they'll tell you that you list the intangibles you want to see with a quarterback. And Russell Wilson's got them all, no doubt. Third round pick out of Wisconsin. And a winner. Here's Lynch. He's not going to be denied. Touchdown.
remember that previous possession, Joe, when they had second and goal from the one and had to settle for a field goal. They were not going to settle for three on this one. They give the ball to Marshawn Lynch, and he finishes it off, and he has ignited this crowd once again. His third time with three rushing touchdowns in the same game. They just can't stop him. But the ground game in general on a chilly, damp day in Seattle, the Seahawks at five and three now lead by seven. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Chili's, by Chevrolet, find new roads, and by Assassin's Creed Unity. Make history with friends. Available November 11th. Rated M for Mature. Jimi Hendrix was born in Seattle in 1942. That's the EMP Museum, a nonprofit museum. And, well, it was interesting, Troy, when we talked to the quarterback, Russell Wilson, the head coach, Pete Carroll. Wilson said we want to throw it against the Giants. Pete Carroll said we want to pound it, and they have pounded it all day long. Boy, that's an understatement. You know, Marshawn Lynch has been terrific, and, of course, Russell Wilson getting outside contained. How costly was the interception there by Eli Manning? They had the ball on the 39-yard line. Earl Thomas comes down with the interception, which fails to give the Giants any kind of points, and they answer with seven points of their own. Right at the same end of the field after the end of the third quarter, and now with a lot of time left. Michael Cox not able to get to the 20. When the games are done, catch all the highlights and breakdowns from a full day of NFL action. Randy Moss, Donovan McNabb, and the best team of experts on TV. Fox Sports Live tonight at 11 Eastern on Fox Sports 1. Streaming live on Fox Sports Go. There's Jay Onright and his wife checking out the action. Hey, yes, sir. Heck, there was talk that Seattle reached out to our Randy Moss this week. And I don't know if there was any truth to it, but... There was some speculation that that took place. Well, the report was from Jay Glazer. I believe anything he says. I do, too. Including his own fight history. Yeah, he's, he's never been wrong that I know of. From the 19 on first down. Now down seven. Nice play. Good play made in the backfield by Bruce Irvin as he knocks down Williams a loss of two. Well, the, the running has been tough for the Giants, as you would expect against this run defense for the Seahawks. But the Giants, they've run it enough to keep this defense honest. But for the Giants to move the football, it's going to come through the air. And Eli Manning, other than the one poor decision on the interception, has been awfully good. Fake the handoff, Manning trying to get it to Williams, incomplete. And right there, in case the catch was made, K.J. Wright. Now third down and 12. Well, you got Odell Beckham Jr., he's in the slot. They put Bruce Irvin on him. He was locked up. He's getting a little help from Earl Thomas working that way, but that gives you an idea of what they think of the athleticism of Bruce Irvin. Manning steps up in trouble. Down he goes. Michael Bennett. A pretty good coverage there on the back end. The initial surge by the Seahawks was from Cliff Averill, and that disrupted the timing. We saw Preston Parker. That's where it looked like Eli was wanting to go with the football, but they're finally able to get to Eli Manning in the pocket. First sack for the Seattle defense today. And now the punt from the end zone. Wet football hit by Weatherford. Returned by Walters, not far. Just two yards. Zach Diossi has snapped it downfield to make the stop. Seahawks have it. Up seven. This week's Hall of Fame spotlight is on Big Walter Jones. He just went into the Hall of Fame. First round draft pick by the Seahawks in 97. Spent his entire 13 year career anchoring Seattle's offensive line. Last week, Walter was added to the Seattle Ring of Honor as his Seahawks were beating the Oakland Raiders. And there you go. 
Well, Walter Jones, you know, back when he was playing, he was uh, the epitome of what you want out of your left tackle. He didn't get any help, and you're facing the best pass rushers in the game, and he held up one-on-one -on -one week after week. A great career, and good to see him in the Hall of Fame. Best starting field position for Seattle. Here's Michael Knuffler. Let's go to Kurt Menefee with the game break. Well, Arizona's a league best 7-1 despite all the injuries they've had this year, but this could be costly. Carson Palmer just goes down with a left knee injury. He's been carted into the locker room. They don't expect him back. And right now his team is trailing on top of that to St. Louis, 14-10. But that does not look good. Joe Troy and Eric. Wow. Wow, wow. He just signed a three-year contract extension. He's had a hard time staying healthy. He's had some unfortunate knee injuries. Drew Stanton now gets the call. He's won games for him, but they are at a loss without Carson Palmer. Here's a long throw that's caught by Curse. Gives you an idea of the arm strength of Russell Wilson. Just a gain of four, however, third down coming up. Yeah, he was off balance. He's throwing it all the way to the sideline. You got to be precise on the throw. Good job. Not much, as you said, on the on the completion, but they got something. Yeah, I don't know if both feet were in by the time Curse secured the catch. Meanwhile, Lynch is smiling on the sideline. He came off looking a little bit in pain. Third and eight. Yeah, big third down for the Giants. Pass is caught. First down. That's Lockett. That's his first catch. Comes at a big time. 16 yards on third down. And Russell Wilson has a shot to get it to lock it right away, but something, you know, he got spooked a little bit. He holds it and then is still able to get it into him to convert here on this third down. Right now, they're knocking on the door of being able to come away with at least three points, and obviously that would then make this a two possession ball game for the New York Giants. Seventh catch of the season for Lockett. Wilson keeps it right around the edge. Ball is punched out. What a play. Who's got it? Demps knocked it out. It's still out there, and look who's on top. It's Bailey. Alvin Bailey getting the start. What a play by Demps to knock it out. And let's take a look at what happened after the ball got loose. Like when it first came out that Russell had secured it, but he never did. It comes out, and then the melee begins. And when it comes out, Alvin Bailey is able to get on top of it. That pile still thought the ball was underneath everybody, and they were all still going after it. But Alvin Bailey, he's able to recover it. So Bailey getting the start at left guard after starting at left tackle last week. Stayed after the play and is there to wrap it up. First, it looked like Demps was going to be on top of it after Wilson could corral it. And it's Bailey. Seahawks about to come up with a season high in the NFL. Pass is broken up as Cooper Helfit got hit by a teammate. That was Lockett. They were in the same spot. Lockett broke it up. Just to finish, Troy, sorry, with that graphic, with two more rushing yards, this will be the biggest rushing day for any team in the NFL with what Seattle's doing to the Giants. Well, usually when you have those kind of rushing days, as you see, it was Pittsburgh who had it before, but generally, you've got a quarterback who can run like Russell Wilson when you pile up those kinds of yards. He's had a big day carrying it. There you go. Here's Lynch. Ball's out. Still loose. And you can just see how slick it is with the way the ball's sliding around. Lynch fumbled it. It's his first fumble of the year. And we'll see who's got it. It stays with Seattle. Uh, you talk about a, a big opportunity for the New York Giants. And being able to create a takeaway when the Seahawks are in scoring position. Knocked out by Pierre Paul. And that's twice now the Giants just unable to cut, recover a loose football. It looks like Richardson, the rookie, one of the littlest guys out there. 
was the guy who got on top of it and avoided what would have been the fourth turnover by Seattle in this game. Now third down and three. Two misses on loose balls by this Giants defense. Here's Lynch, first down and more. He's got four touchdowns in the game. We've seen this a few times from the Seattle Seahawks. They go wide splits with the receivers. They stack them up here as far as they can. And what that does, then, it opens up a lot of room for the running lanes for Marshawn Lynch. You're going to see the job that he's able to do that once he gets past the line of scrimmage, those corners are so far removed, they can't get in and try to make a play on Marshawn Lynch. The last Seattle Seahawk to rush for four touchdowns in a game was Sean Alexander back in 2005. The Seahawks on the drive, put it on the ground twice, able to recover it twice, and then number 24 does the rest. Up 14 of the Seahawks in the fourth. Today's game is sponsored by K Jewelers. Every kiss begins with K. Rain pounding down on this chilly evening now in Seattle. There's the drive, and for Marshawn Lynch, first time he's ever run for four in a game. He's got all the touchdowns for Seattle. Plus a Hauschka field goal. It's 31 17, 7.47 left. And the Giants will start at the 20. And here in week 10, you've got one side frustrated. Secondary, the linebackers, the defensive line cannot stop the run for the Giants. And on the other side, Wilson and Lynch chewing up yards on the ground with their legs. Well, Joe, there's been a lot of teams that haven't been able to slow down this Seattle running game with Marshawn Lynch. But I know Antrell Roll last week questioned the emotional level of the sidelines during that ball game. I think this Giants team has played exceptionally hard here today. Here's a little reverse. It's Beckham. And the rookie Odell Beckham's got a first down. I mean, it's just not that easy for some guys to come into the league, somebody who missed the entire preseason, the first four weeks of the regular season, and he's hit the ground flying. That doesn't even make sense, but he's hit the ground running for the Giants. I think outside of quarterback, wide receiver is the hardest position for a rookie to come in and have an impact. I've been impressed with what I've seen of him. Here's Randall. Randall out across the 40. And he's got enough for a first down. Let's go to Kurt for the game break. Well, we showed you the injury to Arizona's Carson Palmer. Four plays after that, Drew Stanton is in the game. Hooks up with John Brown. Maybe the catch of the year. Certainly the celebration of the year. That puts Arizona up by three in the fourth. Joe Troy and Aaron. Here's something interesting that happened during the break. Not going to matter. Flag flies as Randall makes the catch. One official had given the Giants a first down on that last completion. And now this is a defensive hold, a first down either way on the completion to Randall. Reuben Randall has made a lot of catches that have been heavily contested. Holding, number 21. Defense penalties declined as a result of the play. First down. You go back to that Arizona highlight there and Drew Stanton. Hey, it doesn't change regardless of who's a quarterback. Bruce Arians is going to take some shots down the field. What a catch by John Brown. I like that celebration, though. <laughs> well, I wonder if he's got a name for that one. First down for the Giants trying to make it a one-score game again. A screen for Williams. Nice play made. And it's the rookie, Pierre Lewis. Joe, there's been a couple times in this game where the Giants have had screen passes set up beautifully, and they've just not been able to get the one guy who's responsible for getting the back. Weston Richburg, the rookie left guard, is the guy who has missed both times 
And if he was able to make his block, there is a lot of field out in front. Here's one out of the reach of Randall. Third down and 10 coming up. Well, somebody had a bus in that offensive line. They allowed a free rusher right in the middle, and Eli Manning just had to unload it. Giants pick it up, pass too high for Donnell. And it's fourth and ten. The Giants will go for it, and why not? They're down by 14 points. They're three and five. But a fourth and ten coming up as Manning, this one might have just gotten away. They just got away from him. He had him, Larry Donnell. He had a step. again Manning floats it passes incomplete for Randall and the Seahawks will take over on downs Coughlin wants a flag as this pass wobbled out there Maxwell on the coverage knocked it away no flag Seahawks have it up 14 Mike Pereira from Los Angeles. We saw Tom Coughlin looking for a flag. What do you think? Well, I think he should have been looking for a flag. This is what Seattle is really good at, grabbing right at the top of the route. You know, to me, that's defensive holding. If the pass is in the air, then it would be defensive pass interference. But the left hand grabs and really restricts Randall, and I think you have a foul really one way or the other. No flag is thrown. Thank you, Mike. And so on down, Seattle takes over up 14. With Kristen Michael in the backfield. He gets it and runs right to the heart of the defense. Still rolling. Michael down inside the five. And a big run from Kristen Michael. And he ended up running right into Zach Bowman. It's first and goal. Well, you look at the hole that's here. He's one on one on the safety, Stevie Brown. I mean, you don't see holes like that very often in this league. One on one, he makes Stevie Brown miss, and it's a great first down play. This running game is just taking its toll on this defense. It sets up first and goal with the ball just outside the one. Here's Wilson going to keep it. Why not? Touchdown. touchdowns for the Seahawks that's the fourth of the year for Russell Wilson and that's the most since 2002 the Giants defense is allowed on the ground 332 they've done it a lot of different ways we've seen him get out on the edge which is how they scored this last touchdown but we've also seen him gash him in the middle the Giants have just been overmatched Came out playing well, but this Giants defense just got worn down. And Russell Wilson's been doing this all day. A big day on the ground. He's got a rushing touchdown. Now Pete Carroll's crew up 21. Well, while Seattle's gone up 21, Arizona now leads by 10 at home over St. Louis. But Seattle trying to keep pace here. They come in two games behind Arizona and they have two games left with Arizona San Francisco has one game left with Arizona as the Cardinals are on their way to an eight and one start but they lost Carson Palmer today to a knee injury obviously at this point don't know the severity for Seattle 40 carries 333 yards rushing officially five touchdowns 
and the 333 yards is a team record for the Seattle Seahawks. Pete Carroll told us we are going to pound it against the Giants and pound it. <laughs> they have. Yeah, well, I, I think Pete Carroll says that every week. You know, I mean, that's kind of what they're about. Next week, Fox NFL Sunday returns. It's a doubleheader. There are the matchups will be in Green Bay for the Eagles and the Packers. Good one there. Packers play tonight against Chicago. Eagles tomorrow night against Carolina. It all starts with the Fox NFL Sunday kickoff show at 11 Eastern on Fox Sports 1, followed by Fox NFL Sunday at noon Eastern right here. There are going to be games, though, Joe, where they're not going to run the ball as well as they typically do, and they've got to be able to have some answers with their ability to throw the football. That is a big question mark. When Percy Harvin was the guy who they really had to concern themselves with, a defense, that is, and you know, these are some good players, but they don't have that one guy that a defense has to game plan like you see around the league and some of these other teams. Yeah, they just simply don't have a guy to blow the top off a defense downfield. Trading Percy Harvin after playing the first five games of this season. He only played eight games for the Seahawks. Now Cox drops the kickoff, gets to the 15, and that's it. Yeah, you know, you think back to last year, they, I mean, they didn't have it last year either. As you said, Percy Harvin was out pretty much the entire year. He only played in three games, including the Super Bowl. So it was different, though, because last year they were so dominant defensively, you know, that they could kind of be methodical in how they played offensively. But this year it's been a little bit different, and not many defenses in this league, and the Seahawks have not been that defense this year to where you can't, where you can afford to not get more out of that passing game. So that's an area where I see that they've got to get a little better. A big package of picks, including a first rounder to Minnesota from Seattle, and it just simply didn't work. So Harvin's with the Jets. The Seahawks are on their way to a six and three start. This is Cox out of the backfield, and he gets dropped by Lane, and that hurt. No gain, and Lane got him down low. You know, you're seeing these types of injuries. Defensive back comes in, and Cox isn't anticipating mm. that left knee. Oh. Oh, left knee and ankle. Take a break. Come back. 5.03 left. They are still looking at Michael Cox over on the sideline. They've got that hit from Jeremy Lane, and it is the ankle. That they're looking at Dallas won today over in London. There are the numbers a 100 yard day on the nose for DeMarco Murray. Big day for Des Bryant. Tony Romo back with the bat back. And now a bye week coming up for the Dallas Cowboys who are at seven and three and interested as to what the Eagles do on Monday night at home against Carolina. They're six and two at the moment. The Giants here are on their way to a three and six start. That's where Washington is. And you see the help Michael Cox needs to get off the field. Well, big win for Dallas. They're playing a Jacksonville team that obviously has had their issues this year along with some other seasons, but a good win over there in London. And when they square off against the Eagles for the first time on Thanksgiving night, that's going to be a heck of a ball game and going a long way in determining who's going to win that division. Second and nine now. Pass is caught. And it's Andre Williams. As the Giants now have lost Peyton Hillis and Michael Cox. Andre Williams, kind of the last man standing at tailback, a gain of five. It's third and four. First down, Beckham. How about Seattle? They have the toughest remaining schedule based on wins and losses across the NFL the rest of the way. They're at Kansas City next, and then at home against first place Arizona, at San Francisco, at Philly.
to Nell. Out to the 35. You see what Arizona is doing today, even without Carson Palmer. And then, of course, the win by San Francisco. This is a, a tough, to, a tough, tough division. You know, as we know, it doesn't get any easier here for Seattle. It's been a grind, but they have fought and clawed in this game and done a nice job. Here's a catch made by Parker, and they're going to give him a first down. Yeah, I spoke about it a little bit earlier, Joe. I, you know, it's hard to come in here to Seattle and, and win a football game. We, we saw Arizona do it last year. We saw Dallas do it a few weeks ago. It's only two losses with Russell Wilson as their quarterback. And but I thought the Giants came in and really gave it great effort. Here's a ball knocked out. Bennett was back there. And it's a scramble for the football. May have just slipped out of the hand of Eli Manning, and it belongs to the Seahawks. Yeah, I don't think anybody hit it, Joe. It looked like when he came back to throw it, it just came out of his hand. It actually didn't even get it back. We saw that fourth down play where it looked to me, and Mike Pereira said that he thought there should have been a holding call on the fourth and ten. Weather was a factor on that throw. It didn't come out as crisp as it typically would for Eli, and clearly the ball slick and just slips out of his hands. So now the NFC East. Philadelphia on top with just two losses. Dallas, the first team to seven wins. Again, Philly plays tomorrow night at home against Carolina. The Giants at the moment are three and five, about to be three and six, and tied at the bottom with the Redskins. Robert Turbin in there, tailback. He gets it. And Turbin picks up four brought down by Hankins. And we'll have one more play before the two minute warning here in Seattle. Well I know Joe is a as a defending world champion it is awfully difficult the next year when you come back you have high expectations but it's hard to enjoy a lot of these victories because you're scrutinized not only whether or not you win but how you do it and they have found ways to win in some difficult ball games they've lost a number of players. This is a big win right here for this Seattle team. Wilson keeps it again. That play's worked since the Giants got off the team bus. <laughs> for the Giants, their fourth straight game, allowing 400 or more total yards. Been a rough season for the Giants defense. First time for a Russell Wilson led offense over 500 total yards today on the other side the 346 rushing yards allowed today by the Giants defense is the most in 564 games since the Bills had 366 in 1978 and you can add some more just to show it to you again. This is a Giants defense that came in having allowed the most yards per game in franchise history and it's going to go up. You see what has happened here on the ground 346 rushing yards allowed today the most in 78. Last time I saw that many yards rushing was watching J.C. watching Billy Sims at the University yeah. of Oklahoma with a wishbone offense. And now they'll just close it in and that should be it. Kneel down as the Seahawks take the foot off the gas pedal here in the fourth quarter with over a minute to go. And if you time it out, since it is third down, the Seahawks won't have to do anything but take a couple of one more kneel down, and that's it. You just kind of wonder where the Giants go from here. Jason Pierre Paul said going into the Dallas game that that was a must win. They lost that. They lost last week. Now they lose here again today. And a lot of speculation as to what the future is going to be for Tom Coughlin. I thought they played awfully hard in this game, and you'd expect that from a Tom Coughlin coach team. I just think that Seattle's a better team. For Tom Coughlin, a four-game losing streak, they've allowed an average of 34 points per game 
over the four games. But the story is Seattle. Now six and three, and they have a date with first place Arizona here at home in two weeks. Take a break and come back, wrap up our day, and then the OT is coming up later. 38-17. That's the final. Back here after this.